Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to work on word problems, chemistry word problems, and we're going to predict products in both single and double replacement reactions. So if I give you the beginning of a chemical reaction, how can you figure out well, what will be made, what the products will be, and then will the reaction actually occur? So here's some steps that you should follow when you write your own equations. The first thing you have to do is look at the beginning of the reaction and figure out what type of reaction it will be. Will it be synthesis, decomposition, double replacement, single replacement, combustion? Now in this video we're going to concentrate on single and double replacement. Uh, see the other video for the synthesis, decomposition, and combustion reactions. We're going to use the reaction type information to predict the likely products. And then we have to check, check to make sure that we actually made real compounds. Balance the charges inside the compounds that you made and make sure that they add up to zero. So let's start with a single replacement reaction. Single replacement reactions are going to take the form A plus B, C, and then one of the elements, the single one, the A, is going to kick out either the B or the C in the compound and then they'll have a fight. So you'll always be given one metal and two nonmetals, or maybe one nonmetal and two metals. So, for instance, here we have zinc and uh, iron chloride. So, here's our zinc, our zinc, and our iron chloride. So, we have a metal, and we have a metal, and we have a nonmetal. So, the two metals are going to fight it out, the zinc and the and the iron, over the nonmetal. Or I could give it to you the other way. Here you have a nonmetal and a non-metal, and one metal, the sodium. So in that case, the two non-metals, the fluorine and the bromine, will fight it out over the metal. So the way that you tell if a single replacement reaction will actually occur is that the most reactive element should be bonded in the end. So let's take a look at zinc and iron. So if we come over here to our activity series, here we have zinc, and here we have iron, and we can see that zinc is more reactive than the iron is because it starts most reactive at the top and it goes down to least reactive at the bottom. Since the zinc is at the top, it's more reactive and it is currently bonded to something. That means that zinc was able to strip away the chlorine and steal it for itself. Now let's go to the other side. Here we have fluorine and fluorine is in there, and bromine is our other non-metal, and those two are going to fight over the sodium. In this case, fluorine is your most reactive non-metal, and so in the end, fluorine is reacted. It has managed to steal away the sodium from the bromine. If you have a double replacement reaction, you'll be looking at a situation which, let's say you have uh, a, B plus C, D, compound A, B plus compound C, D. So sodium chloride, A, B, plus silver nitrate, C, D. And they're going to switch partners. So the sodium, uh, you've got this positively charged cation here, and it's going to react with the other one's negatively charged anion. And then the silver compound, the silver, will come over here and steal away that nitrate. Okay, so you can sort of think about this in terms of foiling, um, where the first one and the last one bond, and then the two inner ones bond. Now, how will you know if a double replacement reaction actually occurs? You're going to have to look for an insoluble uh, product. So, how would you know if it's insoluble? Well, your teacher may actually have you memorize a solubility uh, chart. They may give you a solubility chart, either way. Um, and there's a couple more options. You might, in one of these reactions, create a covalent substance. Usually it's water, um, but there are other things that could possibly be formed. But look for water as a product. Or did you produce bubbles? Did you produce a gas? Because you're looking for signs that a real reaction has occurred. Okay, as I said be before, you're going to need a solubility table. So I went to Wikipedia and they have a solubility table built in there and I'll show you how to use this one. Again, your teacher may ask you to memorize a whole bunch of solubility rules or they may give you a table. Um, in this case, uh, let's see, pen color, let's go black. Um, let's say I had um, aluminum 
bonded to chloride. If I bring aluminum over and I bring the chloride down, I find out that in this table, aluminum bonded to chloride is soluble in water. So that would be no good for a double replacement reaction. So I need to find something that is insoluble, like aluminum hydroxide. So aluminum over with hydroxide would give me a precipitate. It would be insoluble in water. Um, or like this case, we have silver and Chloride's not on this list. Oh no, chloride is on this list. So we can go silver and chloride and find out that it is insoluble. It will form precipitates in water. So you need to be looking there at your, you take your products, look them up in this table. And as long as one of them is an I, then the reaction will occur. Summing up, single replacement, you look at the activity series and you want to make sure that the most active metal um, or the most active non-metal is bonded at the end of the reaction. If it's double replacement, then you need to find an insoluble ionic product, a gas, or a covalent substance, especially water. Oops, let's go back there. Um, if it's another type of reaction, like a synthesis, decomp, or oxidation, you can safely assume that that reaction will occur. You don't have to check in any tables. Uh, it's just going to happen. If the reaction does occur, then I want you to use coefficients to balance it. And if the reaction does not occur, then don't bother. It's not worth the time. So let's do some examples here. Let's say I gave you some iron nails and we placed them in a solution of copper 2 chloride. So here's what you have. Iron plus copper 2 chloride, right? So the first thing you have to do is identify the type of reaction. It looks like single replacement because I have an A plus B C format here. Okay, here's my A, um, here's my B, C bonded together. So if that happens, then um, I can pretty safely assume that the iron is going to try and replace the copper. The two metals are going to fight over the non-metal. Now, let's say that the, uh, the iron is able to take the copper, or the chlorine, away from the copper. I would have to look it up on the... Um, activity series because it's a single replacement and I would find out that iron is more active than copper so this should be able to occur. Now we have one other thing which is that iron is either going to take a plus two or a plus three charge and since it wasn't specified which one let's just take an easy route and assume that iron two is actually the created one. So in this situation we've got um, one iron and we've got one iron on the right, we've got one copper on the left, one copper as a product, two chlorines and two chlorines. This thing is already balanced, so we're in good shape. Uh, we don't have any additional work to do. Um, so now I want you to take a look at the movie on the right uh, and see what it looks like. Okay, you can tell that uh, the iron and the copper chloride actually did react. You can see the little flakes of copper sinking to the bottom. If we let this run a little bit, little bit longer, the copper two chloride would, solution would change from a blue to an orangey color, showing that the iron two chloride uh, went into solution. Okay. Problem number two. Let's say lead nitrate and potassium iodide solutions are mixed. Here we have lead nitrate and potassium iodide. Now this is a double replacement reaction because it occurs in the AB plus CD format. So what again what I'll have is iron will come over here and try and steal iodine away from potassium and the potassium will try and steal the nitrate from the iron or from the lead I'm sorry. So I'll wind up with this where the lead and the iodine try and bond and the nitrate and the potassium try and bond and as you can see, I've already balanced the charges, lead taking a plus two, iodine with a minus one, so I need two iodines, and potassium and nitrate both have positive and negative one charges, so they balance. Now, since it's double replacement, I have to look this up in a solubility chart. Lead to iodide will be insoluble, and potassium nitrate will be soluble, dissolves in water, um, but since at least one of them was insoluble, this reaction will occur. 
So I will have lead 2 nitrate plus potassium iodide goes to lead iodide. Oops, come on back there. Um, but it's unbalanced. So I've got one lead and one lead. Um, I've got two nitrates, so I'm going to need a two here to balance out the nitrates. But that's going to mess up my potassium. So let's come over here and put a two here. So I have two potassiums. That gives me two iodides, and I have two iodides, so we're in good shape. Now again, let me show you some uh, that reaction occur over here. Uh, take a look at it. As you can see, we get a nice yellow precipitate that forms in the test tube. This chemical reaction actually occurred. Okay, example three. Potassium iodide and sodium carbonate uh, solutions are mixed together. So here we have Ki plus Na2CO3, and it looks like double replacement. Again, we have Ki, that's an AB, um, and we have NaCO3, Na being C and CO3 being D. Um, and potassium is going to reach over here and try and steal the carbonate away from the sodium, and the sodium is going to try and steal the iodide away from the potassium. So here's what we have, and again, I've already balanced the charges. Uh, carbonate takes a minus two charge, so I'll need two potassiums for that to occur. It's double replacement. You need to look up the solubility of your two products. Both NaI and potassium carbonate are soluble ionic compounds. There's no gas created here, you don't recognize anything, and there's nothing covalent produced, so no reaction will occur. Take a look at this in the video on the right, and you'll see nothing happens. So I add a clear liquid with a clear liquid, and my product is a clear liquid. There's no reaction, and there's no reason to even bother uh, balancing that thing, because nothing has actually occurred. We just have a mixture of two solutions. Example four. Say I take some sodium iodide, mix it with chlorine gas that's been dissolved in water. So here I have NaI plus Cl2. Now, this might look to you like it's a double replacement because of this two here, but it's actually a single replacement reaction. I have Na and I, A and B, and chlorine, which is part of the Brinkelhoff family, so it's an element that occurs as a pair, which is letter C. So the chlorine is going to reach over here and try and strip off the sodium from the iodine. The two non-metals will fight over the metal. And we're going to get this reaction. Uh, I've balanced the charges, and Brinkelhoff means that iodine must be a pair. Single replacement. Look up your elements on the activity series, and you'll see that chlorine is more active than iodine. So this reaction should ac occur, and let's take a look at it. Here we have one Na and one Na, uh, one I and two I's. So we're going to have to double this thing, so that way We'll have two iodines, but that's going to mess up my, my sodiums, so I'll have to double this sodium over here, which will also double my chlorine, which is okay because chlorine comes as a pair in the Brinkelhoff there. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, it also, in the video here, and see what happens. Okay, again, I added two uh, clear liquids, and when I put them together, I'm going to get a red liquid, and that red is actually the iodine um, as a uh, covalent material, which is kind of floating in the water. It's not very soluble, and that iodine takes on that reddish tinge to it. Now I want you to pause the video and try these two problems on your own. Okay, on your own problem A. Barium nitrate and sodium carbonate solutions are mixed. Here you go. That is a double replacement reaction. It takes the form AB plus CD. Barium is going to get rid of the nitrate and try and pick up the carbonate. 
uh, which is like this, you'll see that the charges are balanced on both products. Uh, when you look them up, you'll find that barium carbonate is an insoluble uh, product. And so the reaction will go and balanced takes this form. Copper metal strip is put in sulfuric acid. This is a single replacement reaction, it takes the form A plus BC. And this copper is going to try and replace the hydrogen ion, like so. Copper is less active than hydrogen though, so it should not be able to replace the hydrogen in the acid. Again, um, no reaction is going to take place, and so there's no need to balance the reaction. You can take a look at it in the movie shown on the right. Okay, good luck everybody. Uh, again, single and double replacement reactions. Try and identify them up front. Look in your tables, make sure that they happen. Good luck.